If you're watching this channel, it's because you don't enjoy watching the world squander what Christendom built, but you want to do your part. And chances are you've heard me mention a great means by doing just that. Email made by and for Catholics. Check out fide.email. That's F-I-D-E-I dot -E email. Built for Catholic individuals, families, organizations, and groups. They're private, secure, and of course, they're Catholic. And they're offering two months off on your first year for an annual subscription if you enter the coupon code return to tradition without spaces that's the name of this channel without spaces at checkout last tuesday i did a live stream on this channel about the saint jude's children's hospital and its foundation and how it was not what it had always reported to be i used the data from lepanto institute to show that that organization supports the james martin sin that the organization proudly, and we'll use that word very purposely, supports every single aspect of every cause that James Martin promotes. They do so quite proudly. I also showed you, using their report and another report, that the organization was never Catholic to begin with. They admitted as much that they are not Catholic. That their founder, who was a professed Catholic, was also a stonecutter, a member of that ancient organization that is an enemy of the church that earns automatic excommunication. The work they do in the world now, aside from all the good things they do, because yes, they do, they help kids, and helping kids is a good thing. But all the work they do in the world, promotion of sins that cry out to heaven for justice, or vengeance, depending on the translation you read, has made it a problem for Catholics to support them. And the overwhelming majority of the replies I got into that video was that people were sad, but it was not that surprising, and or that many were surprised because they had been giving to that organization for literally decades and will no longer be doing so. A few people pushed back saying, essentially the ends justify the means, that it's okay to support them because the ends justify the means, that they do good work, so it doesn't matter what evil they do in the world. That's not usually a Catholic answer to things. This is not like uh, the debate on who you should support in a political contest. This is something a little more in your face because they violate church teaching on this issue and on several others, and they have no qualms about continuing to do so. But the question is now, who can you support with your, essentially your tithing dollars? The church tells us to tithe 10%, but the church also tells us you can tithe more to places that are not just the church, to church-related organizations or even secular organizations that do not violate the faith. Good luck finding one of those these days, but you can do that because you're supposed to use your money to help the poor and the mission of the church. So you should give some to the church to help the mission of the church, and some to help do the corporal works of mercy of the various kinds that they are. And you can make the argument that you're doing that by supporting St. Jude's. Typically, that should not come with over evil. Because the argument about supporting them comes down to, am I supporting evil or not? Or is the evil they do outweighed by the good they do? Again, when we're talking about the corporal works of mercy, that doesn't necessarily fly as much. But a listener who paid attention in that video... He emailed me hours after that live stream and said that he had attached to his email a list of organizations that he had deemed safe and not safe. Virtually every Catholic organization he could find, or every purportedly Catholic organization that he could find. And he has a master list and a spreadsheet of what is safe. So I'm going to give you some highlights from it, from both sides of it, the not safe and the safe. And I'm going to post it at returntotradition.org. This is a post you're going to want to go to and bookmark because you may have noticed we're in the middle of September, which means very soon you are going to start getting emails from people from organizations that you've been affiliated with the past or who bought your contact information asking for donations. So this is helpful for you. And you will not see my organization on there because my organization is one person and I am not registered as a 501c3 or its equivalent kind of organization for those who would be inclined to ask about that, because I know somebody will. So let's go to this chart here. So a lot of these that you'll see on this list are Catholic, but also a lot are secular or faith-based. And they're not said, they are, the, the chart actually has 
why they're not safe. For instance, facilitates the Moloch ritual or facilitates those artificial barriers to being fruitful and multiplying, or James Martin activism, or the hammer and sickle ideology, or facilitates heresy. Now, a lot of these don't, a lot of these don't, but a lot of these do facilitate heresy. But most of these have to do with those moral issues and are non-starters. For instance, let's go down to just this one: Caritatis Internationalis. They facilitate, facilitate the Moloch ritual. They facilitate those artificial barriers. They are not involved in James Martin activism. Small, small favors, I guess. But they do facilitate the hammer and sickle ideology. Let's continue on down to the next one. Mary's Pence. Yes, a, you've heard of Peter's Pence. Well, here's one called Mary's Pence. Listed as not safe. They're a Catholic organization who facilitates the Moloch ritual, those artificial barriers, the James Martin activism. They don't support the hammer and sickle ideology overtly, although I would actually disagree with that because if you are facilitating those other three things, then you are at least soft on that issue. And they do facilitate heresy. Let's continue down. The Salvation Army is not safe because it's not a Catholic organization, for one. It facilitates the Moloch ritual and those artificial barriers. It does not involve itself in James Martin activism, and is, uh, but it does and is not involved in the heres the hammer and sickle heresy. And they are, well, they do facilitate heresy. If you know anything about the, the Salvation Army and its foundations, you will not be surprised to know that that organization, at least on the religious side of it, the faith group behind it rejects baptism <laughs> as being necessary for salvation. I know that's not that that uncommon of a view among quote Bible believing Christians, but there because there are some who for whatever reason don't take Peter at his word when he said baptism now saves you, but there but there you have it. But there's a whole lot of these other groups on here that this is a very good guide updated as of the 10th of September. Let's go down to a few safe ones since we want to give you some options. Both Caritatis and Veritate International and Caritatis Veritate Missions are listed as safe across the board. They don't support heresy or any of those other non-starter positions. They do international relief work um, and you know international aid to the poorest people. A good organization in general. Catholic World Mission is another one like that. There's Children of God for Life. There's another one. Credo of the Catholic Laity. Um, you know, I'll just give you some screenshots here of the organ of what these organizations are. In fact, you, the, the nice thing about this list is it's longer on the good organizations than there are for the bad ones. But it's worth noting that on this organizational list, what you don't see is, quite frankly, Anything that, is, that obviously stands out to fill the gap that St. Jude's leaves for those of you who cannot give to them but have that issue near and dear to your heart. And I'm going to give you an alternative that might help. There are GoFundMe campaigns. And even better, give, send, go. GoFundMe has problems, serious problems with Christians. But between those organizations and those, uh, those websites and similars, similar ones out there, you will find crowdfunding opportunities to help individuals directly <coughs> and helping those individuals directly is part of the corporal works of mercy one of the things i try to remind people is jesus told us to go out and help the poor and it's certainly the church has said it's certainly fine for you to go and give your money to the church to do that work to do to give your money to secular organizations who don't do problematic things to do the corporal works of mercy. That Those things are fine. The church has said that unequivocally, even before the council. But Jesus told us to go out and help the poor. To me, it sounds like we're supposed to go help those in need, the poor, the, de the those who are in, you know, the sick, the, those who are alone in life, have nobody to go comfort them. To do, you know, the corporal works of mercy. And he told us to go out and do those things. That means we should do them. At least a little bit ourselves, while also supporting the work of others who dedicate their lives to that work. And there's another thing you can do when this giving season comes. Is you can, if you are not wanting to, you, you feel you need to give pay your tithe. You can do so 
by, you know, giving some to your building project at your parish because the, the, the diocese won't tax that. Though I will warn you, if your diocese does not meet the expectations, if your parish does not meet the expectations of your diocese when it comes to the diocesan tax levied on each parish, they will then ask for special collections to make up for that. So in theory, when you don't give to that, the they keep pushing and pushing and other people have to make up for it. But you can give to safe church organizations. Seminarians, for instance, direct funds to seminarians, seminarian funds. There are organizations out there that help uh, young people seeking to become religious or priests who have a big student loan debt to pay off their, help them pay off their student loans so they can then go dedicate their lives to being nuns and priests and the rest of it. Those are all good organizations to support whatever speaks to you. Kind of thing you should pray on, that you should fast on, and you should look at in a very serious way about what to do during this time of crisis in the church. Curious what you think about this? So let me know in the comments, please. This will be listed in the, this will be again a post in the show notes at return to tradition.org. So, and it will hopefully be a downloadable PDF or at least image form. I'm recording this several days in advance, so I'll work out the technical details between now and then. But let me know what you think of this in the comments. Hey, like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So, just sharing this on social media, especially videos like this, helping, you know, spread this out, the information out there, because there's plenty of people who do not bother themselves with church politics, but do not want to give to evil organizations either. So this information should be very helpful to people. So please share this on social media if you can. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.